Right, good morning everybody. Thanks for giving up your Saturday morning and allowing me to not to be on my own and get sad on this such a rainy day. Um, what we're going to do today is the multivariable differentiation and from the slides you can see that I've been rather ambitious and put in a lot of exercises. I, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to go through every single one of them. We'll see how uh, the timing goes. Uh, before we start, how annoying is this squiggle here? Because I'm worried that if I actually take the um, projector slide off, uh, that it will be too shiny for the camera. I mean, if it gets annoying, then we can just get rid of it, but I'm, I'm hoping it will be able to sort of manage without the squiggle. Okay, so, multivariable differentiation. So what I'm trying to go through today is just, again, start with the very basics. What are functions of more than one variable? Why they are important for us? And briefly go to the notation. Then I'm going to show you a couple of uh, ideas where you can play around with the visual representation of the partial derivatives because sometimes it's good to know what's going on behind, not just doing the mindless algebra. Uh, then we're going to do quite a lot of exercises on first and second order partials, then go for the cross partials, then spend a little bit of time on the total differential and implicit differentiation and its application. That's what I'm planning to cover for today and hopefully um, we'll have enough time <laughs> to go through it all. Okay, so can you give me an example when we start to talk about a function that has got more than one variable? I couldn't hear you, sorry. Cooling, so you've got a cup of coffee, yep. it's cooling down, you've got temperature inside, yep. um, you've got the air outside. Yep. Things. So as soon as something depends on more than one thing, you start to talk about multivariable functions. So generally in economical examples, what kind of multivariable examples can you come up with? Demand function. Demand function could depend on what? Um, income. Um, consumer taste. Um, oh. <laughs> You're testing yourself on your theory knowledge now. <laughs> okay, quite a lot of things. The I don't price, know. The price of the good, of course. Yeah. And the price of substitutes. And exactly. Uh, so. Exactly. So, you can sort of see that in economics, it's really, really important that you fully understand multivariable functions because they crop up all the time. Life would be simple if things would be only depending on one thing. Unfortunately, that's not the case in general. Now, how can you visualize them? When we're talking about single variable functions, we, it was quite an easy case because you could just draw the coordinate system, the x and y, and draw some lines or squiggles or whatsoever. What happens once you leave the nice and easy, cozy two dimension? You can do the three dimensional one exactly so up the up to three dimension is kind of okay you can sort of visualize them as surfaces uh, in the three-dimensional place uh, space something so very simple like a tabletop that would be a very very simple uh, surface but as soon as you leave three dimension once you talk about more than uh, variables more than three or four that becomes really really abstract and that's that's how far human visualization is able to go the rest of it, it's just kind of very abstract out in the, in the air somewhere. So in there, it's quite difficult to sort of visualize what's going on. So you need to kind of re re rely on your um, algebraic knowledge of what these things mean, rather than trying to imagine them. OK. Now, there are uh, quite a few common notation used. And again, once you start to have more than one variable, uh, in usually in the functions argument you have to sort of state which variables you're talking about and to say that we're not doing partial differentiation we're doing now the curly D rather than the normal D but for ease of notation you can always just use the function and x down in the letter subscript so that tells you that you're doing the partial differentiation with respect to the variable x or the y or whichever variable you use there Okay, right, let's see 
if these will work. <coughs> now you've got the slides so you can look for this um, website yourself. The trouble with it that to be able to play around with it and sort of uh, show the different things you need to download a software, which I'm not allowed onto these computers, but I do suggest that when you go home, check it out. And uh, every time you come across with some kind of complicated mathematical concepts that you're not necessarily uh, able to grasp or understand visually, uh, this website is really good because it has got a lot of uh, easy demonstrations, visual demonstrations of the different mathematical concepts. Um, so basically what happens in here, You've got your surface, and once you start to talk about partial derivatives with respect to the x variable, what happens? You fix all of the other variables. So this is just a two variable function, x and y. So what happened? We fixed the y variable, and then we're looking at now how the x variable changes. And same on here. So that red line sort of represents you, the sort of slice where the y is fixed and how the x is changing along those lines. So that's, that's this one. Now, what do you think this one is about? So again, we've got the purple, the kind of bluish purplish surface, and you've got a point on it, and then to that point, you've got a straight surface. So what do you think that is? Oh, okay. hmm? I think it's a uh, indifference type curve. Uh, you could think about it as an indifference type of curve because it's kind of have that sort of general okay. shape as the indifference <coughs> curve, but that's not uh, the point in here. Tangent, okay? So in two dimension, you've got a tangent line, but in three dimension, you start to have a tangent plane. So the, the common thing in here is that you've got one common pon point with the surface and the tangent plane. So in that tangent plane, the will, plane will be your overall change for the function. So that's what kind of going on here in the background. Now, if you download that little software, you can play around with it and see how it changes if you change the point or if you change other kind of um, parameters in the, in the demonstration. So do play around with it to see if, well, hopefully it will make a bit more uh, easy way. Now, everybody likes a little bit of uh, short and easy formulae, I believe. So slides are here. So once you actually come out from the nice and simple one variable version, the notation becomes quite cumbersome. So you know, remember the simple power rule was bring the power down and lower the power by one. As soon as you start to talk about multivariable differentiation, that becomes a little bit more complicated. Because yes, you still follow the rule of bring the power down and uh, lower the power by one. But now you need to remember that your function is not just the variable of one function. So one, um, your function is not just the function of one variable. It's a function of two variables. So you still need to multiply this with the derivative of the actual function with respect to whichever variable you need to carry out the differentiation. And the product rule, again, pretty much the same. Keep the first term multiplied by the derivative of the second. Differentiate the first term multiplied uh, by the second. But again, you need to keep track of which variable you're differentiating by. Um, other than that, it's quite, I mean, the notation is just a little bit more complicated. But when we come to the actual examples, hopefully, they will be a little bit simpler. So are we ready to jump in? OK. So, until you're very familiar and become kind of, uh, it's become kind of second nature, 
what I suggest is that before you start to do the differentiation, write down what is your variable and which variables you keep constant. So x is my variable and y is my constant. So I have no more other variables in the function, so just these two. What it means for me is that when I'm looking at the function, now I need to kind of ignore y and keep it as if it was another number, treat it as it was another, another number. So when I look at 8x squared, if I need to differentiate that with respect to x, it's just the same as if it was in single variable case. So that would be 12x, sorry, not 12, 16. So that's 16x. When it comes to the second term, 14xy, what I need to keep in mind in here is that it's not just only the 14 that's my constant multiplier, but also the y is a constant multiplier now. So actually, the function I um, need to differentiate is y equals x. So what is x derivative? That's 1. And 14y is basically the constant multiplier. So constant times x derivative is just the constant. So I need to just write down 14y. And how about the last term? The last term is 15y squared. I know that y is a constant. Constant square is a constant. Times a number is still a constant. So what is the constant's derivative? Zero. So whenever you only have got the other variable, nothing else in that term, that's always treated as a constant, so that derivative is always zero because that doesn't change as far as I'm interested in the change uh, for the x. When you need to do it, uh, differentiate it with respect to y, you switch the rows. Now x is the constant <coughs> and y is the variable. And from then on, the rule is the same. 8x squared, there's no y in here. As far as the differentiation goes, we treat it as a constant, so that derivative will be 0. 14xy, now the 14x is my constant multiplier, and y is my variable. And again, that is a constant times the variable, just to its uh, own, nothing uh, funny goes on there. So that derivative will be constant times 1, because y's derivative with respect to y is 1. So I'm keeping 14x. And the last term now, 5y squared. Now y is my variable, so that's just the normal power rule. So that will be 10y. Any questions? Hope not, this is relatively simple. Should not get too confusing just yet. Okay? Slides are here. Okay, look at this one. What would you do with this? What would you use for this one? Yes, we could use the product rule. So, how does the product rule go? Again, x is my variable and y is my constant. So, again, what I need to look at, I need to look at the first term. The first term is 2x squared plus 6y. That's derivative with respect to x is 4x because only the first term within the bracket has got x in there. That's derivative is 4x. The 6y is constant as far as the uh, partial differentiation with respect to x goes. So that's derivative will be 0. Now I need to multiply that with the second term, which is 5x minus 3y cubed. Plus, now I keep the first term. And need to multiply this with the derivative with respect to x of the second term. Second term, similar. I've got 5x minus 3y cubed. The 3y cubed is a constant as far as this uh, differentiation goes. And the 5x's derivative is just 5. So that multiplied by 5. Um, 
you can multiply the brackets out, that's quite simple. Let's do a little bit of, little bit of algebra. So 4x times 5x gives me 20x squared. 4x times minus 3y cubed, that gives me minus 12xy cubed. Plus 10x squared plus 30y. And what I can see here is that I have got x squares. So this term and that term can be brought together. So that's 30x squared minus 12xy cubed plus 30y. Okay, uh, this is as simple as I can go. So let's look at the second derivative, uh, the partial derivative with respect to y. x is now the constant and y is now the variable. So the rule is the same. Look at the first term and differentiate it, but now with respect to y. So the first term, 2x squared plus 6y, as far as this differentiation goes, this is constant, its derivative is 0, and 6y's derivative is just 6. Keep the second term. Now, keep the first term and multiply it with the derivative of the second term with respect to y. So as far as the differentiation with respect to y goes, the 5x is a constant, that's derivative is 0. The minus 3y cubed derivative with respect to y will be minus 9y squared. Okay, uh, again, multiply the brackets out. What I've got is 30x minus 18y cubed. 2x squared times minus 9y squared, that is minus 18x squared y squared. And plus times minus minus again, 6 times 9 is 54. And y times y squared is y cubed. And now, I've got big numbers. Uh, these are terms that I can bring together because they're both y cubes. So I've got 30x. Okay, help me out here. This would be 72. Minus 72y cubed minus 18x squared y squared. Okay? Now, I've used the product rule. Yeah. Sorry, something um, Tony said on a couple of occasions yeah. is that um, he doesn't seem to be that keen on simplifying things. Oh, problems. okay. So for, uh, I'm just asking, yeah. do you know for examination purposes? Whatever oh. Tony says, that's, that's going to be in the exam situation because he is the one who is delivering the thing and he knows it better. Uh, I'm just used to because I've been trained to simplify everything as much as possible and I believe that a little bit of algebraic manipulation doesn't hurt because it's probably something that you haven't done for quite some time and even though in these situations it might not be vital but when it comes to the practical application you will need to do because you will need to be able to solve them uh, and those probably you know those are equal weight uh, in the exam because you're gonna have a generic section on A and uh, practical applications in section of B. So um, I'm just exposing you to as much practice as possible. In the general cases, whatever Tony says in the exam, that's what you need to follow. But in general, we're not going to hurt ourselves, but we'll need to simplify it. No. <laughs> OK. Now, um, we use the product rule. Could have been got away without it. Look at that function. It's relatively simple. There is nothing funny powers going on in here whatsoever. So you could have just easily multiplied the bracket out to start with. And then you probably would have been able to just use simple power rules term by term rather than going through the product rule for each of them. Okay? So again, if the question doesn't actually ask you to use a certain rule, then you're allowed to do whichever way you see fit and probably most cases try to go with the simplest uh, method because that's the least problematic method. So I suggest that you go home and if you haven't had enough practice 
you try to multiply this out and check if my solution is the same as yours would, would be that way. Okay? Do you mind passing it back to her? Okay, so look at this function. What rule do we need to use here? Chain. Yes, the chain rule uh, applied to the power function. So we just need to bring the power down, lower the power by one, and then multiply with the derivative of the inside, but now keeping in mind that we're differentiating with respect to x. So x is my variable and y is my constant. So 5 times 7x squared plus 4y cubed to the power of 4. And I need to multiply that with. When I look at the inside function, that's again quite simple because the two terms are separated. One of them is only depends on x, the other one only depends on y. So the derivative of 7x squared with respect to y is 14x and the derivative of 4y cubed with respect to x is 0. So that was relatively uh, easy. I'm going to leave it like that just so you can have a little bit of break. That's not a difficult, um, there's nothing much to simplify, just multiply the two things, to, the numbers together and bring the x to the front so it's not overly uh, helpful. So x equals now the constant and y is now my variable. So as long as the... Sorry, um, if I were to, if you, you said if we were to simplify that, mm -hmm. we would obviously you would multi multiply 5 in. Yeah, not, not in, these two. Oh, just those two? Just those two, because it's to the power of 4, so I oh, can't oh. bring 5 into there. Oh. Uh, because it's to the power of 4. Okay, so 5 times 14, I was trying to avoid doing that in my head. <laughs> Anybody got a calculator? Is 70? 70? So 70x, 7x squared plus 4y cubed to the power of 4. And I can't do anything else. Because to be able to break this bracket out and bring something to the power of 4, I need to remember the binomial formula, which I suspect quite a few of you don't. And on top of that, it doesn't really give you any, any, any extra information, so it stays as it is. Okay, so now I'm doing the differentiation with respect to y, but as long as the first term goes, it's the same thing, because it's still the same function raised to the same power. So 5, 7x squared plus 4y cubed to the power of 4. But now the difference will be the derivative of the so-called inside function. So when I look at 7x squared plus 4y cubed and differentiate, sorry, differentiate that with respect to y, now this is a constant term, so that derivative will be 0. And I just need to differentiate this term, which will give me 12 y squared. So again, multiply the two constants together, that gives me 60. Bring the y squared front and then just copy the bracket. <coughs> Any questions?
So when you look at this function, what rule are you going to have to use? <laughs> Nobody wants to talk. Okay. <laughs> Caution's rule. All right. So the quotient rule goes the way that I remember it, and I know that Tony does it slightly differently, but the re result is always the same, is look at the numerator differentiated with respect to x. So x to the 5 times y, I need to remember now that y behaves like a constant, so that would be something like 3 or 4. Okay, so that's a constant multiplier, so I need to keep that in my function after the differentiation. So, uh, when I differentiate the numerator, that's going to give me 5x to the 4 times y. The 5y, there is no x in there, so that's a constant, that's derivative is 0. So I need to multiply this with the uh, denominator, minus, keep the numerator, and now I need to multiply that with the denominator's derivative with respect to x. Okay, so what I've got in the denominator is x, y minus 2x. So x is in both terms. Once it's multiplied by y, in the uh, latter term it's multiplied by 2. But remember y is my constant, so they behave exactly the same way. So x, y's derivative with respect to x will be y, and minus 2x's derivative with respect to x will be minus 2. And now I just need to put it all over the denominator's square. Uh, if I need to do the differentiating with differentiation with respect to y, then now x is my constant and y is my variable. Are you alright there? Okay. So now I need to differentiate with respect to y. So the rule goes the same way, but now I'm switching the rules of the x's and the y's. So look at the numerator and differentiate that with respect to y. Now what I see there that y is in both terms, uh, and it's in both cases multiplied by a constant. x to the 5 doesn't look like a constant, but because I'm differentiating with respect to y, I treat it as a constant. So constant times y derivative is constant, so that's x to the 5, plus 5y's derivative is the same, it's just 5 the constant. So multiply that with the numerator, minus, keep the, uh, sorry, multiply that with the denominator, uh, keep the numerator, and multiply that with the denominator's derivative with respect to y. Now what I see in the denominator, that there is only, there is y in only the first term, x, y. So constant times y's derivative is the constant, which in this case is the x, uh, and the minus 2x, as far as I'm concerned, is 0 because I'm differentiating with respect to y. And then, Again, just keep the denominator and square it. <coughs> Any questions? Okay, again you can go into breaking the brackets out and seeing if you can simplify something or another. However, if it's not necessary, it's something that just takes time and easy to mess up. Okay, now, those were the first order partial derivatives. When we start to talk about the second order partial derivatives, what's the difference? How can you get to the second order partial derivative? You are so not used to talking. <laughs> Again, yes, exactly. So you need to differentiate it with respect to the variable once and 
then you have to do uh, the differentiation again, but now with the derivative of the uh, original function. So, to be able to calculate fxx, which is the second order derivative with respect to x, first I need to find the first order derivative with respect to x, which is f sub x. So, 3x squared plus 2xy minus 5y cubed. The first derivative with respect to x is 6x plus 2y. And the third variable has only got y in it, so that constant becomes 0. And what I need to do again, pick up the first order and differentiate it with respect to x again. So first term 6x, that's derivative is 6. Second term 2y, that's derivative is 0. Nice and sweet. When you want to find fyy, you need to find fy first and then differentiate that again with respect to y. So 3x squared's derivative with respect to y is 0 because there's no y in it, so that's a constant. 2xy's derivative with respect to y is 2x because that's the constant multiplier. And the minus 5y cubed's derivative is minus 15y squared. So to find f, y, y, I need to do, uh, I need to differentiate f, y with respect to y again. The 2x's derivative will be 0 because there is no y in there. And the minus 15y squared derivative is minus 30y. Okay? Why do you think we need to do the, uh, uh, are we doing the uh, second order partials? Where do you actually apply them? Optimization. optimization. Have you covered optimization multivariable yet? Okay. Yeah. So those are the conditions that you need to double check uh, to see if you found minimums or maximums and the rest of it. Okay, I'm going to have a workshop on uh, multivariable optimization, but I want to do it together with the uh, constraint and unconstraint. So that will be the last in the term. So look at these ones. Okay, I look at this uh, function again and I identify that there are two terms in there that I need to multiply together. Okay, question, can I get away without the power rule, uh, sorry, the product rule here? Um, this is to the power of 3. Okay, if you know how to factor it out, uh, even then, if you know how to factor it out, you might end up with something too long and too complicated. So it's usually easier just to use the, power, uh, the product rule here. But remembering that the first term when I'm differentiating it, this is actually a chain, because it's to the power of. Okay? Because a plus b to the cubed, it's a little bit complicated to remember. It has got ends up with four uh, terms rather than three. And then straight, to, straight away, it, be, it will be a bit more complicated, uh, complicated. So, right, again, x is the variable, and y is the constant. So, differentiate the first term with respect to x. Well, it's a power function, so I need to differentiate according to the power rule first. So bring the power down, lower the power by 1, and then I need to multiply it with the derivative of the inside with respect to x. x plus y was the derivative with respect to x. 1. Okay, y's derivative is 0, x's derivative is 1. So strictly speaking, I should write the times 1 in here, but I'm not going to. But don't forget, you always have to check what's the derivative inside. And then I need to multiply that with the second term, which is x squared minus y squared. Plus, keep the first term and multiply it with the second term's derivative with respect to x. So I've got x squared minus y squared. x squared's derivative with respect to x is 2x, and y squared derivative with respect to y, e, uh, respect to x is 0. So I could tidy this one up a little bit.
and if I actually wanted to simplify it I can spot that both terms have got the x plus y squared in there so I can factor that out And what stays here is x plus y times x squared minus y squared plus 2x times x plus y. And I think you can now see why Tony is saying he's not that bothered about simplification. Because strictly speaking, once you multiply these out, you might end up with something a lot something simpler looking. But is it actually going to give you a lot more information about what this looks like? Not necessary. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. Uh, if you feel like um, practicing a little bit of algebra, uh, you can do it at home. Um, Zy. X is now my constant, and Y is now my variable. So, again, I'm using the product rule. Okay? x plus y cubed uh, is the first term. I need to differentiate that again, but now with respect to y. So, 3x plus y squared, but now I need to multiply it with the derivative of x plus y with respect to y. However, that is 1 again, because x's derivative with respect to y is 0, and y's derivative with respect to y is 1. So, I need to I should write the pl uh, times 1 here, but in most cases we don't. So I differentiated the first term. I need to multiply that with the second term. And now I keep the first term. And I need to multiply that with the derivative of the second term. Okay? The derivative of the second term, x squared's derivative with respect to y is 0. And minus, two y, uh, sorry, minus y squared's derivative is minus 2y. Um, again, tidy it up a little bit. Um, and you end up with something looking like this. Again, you can go into factoring out x plus 2 squared, but then again, a lot of almost mindless algebra coming in, and the end result not necessarily simpler than what you started with. And I have totally forgotten that we're doing the second order derivatives. So, um, right, second order derivative. All ah, right, now I remember why I went into the uh, simplification. If I look at this, and I needed to differentiate it with respect to uh, x again, what I see is there are two terms and each of them are products. So we need to use the product rule twice. So it would end up with something really long and quite easy to mess up. So unfortunately we have to go through the <laughs> simplification because that actually will make uh, life a little bit easier. Okay, so x times x squared gives me x cubed. x times minus x y, uh, uh, y squared gives me minus x y squared plus y x squared gives me x squared plus y and y times minus y squared give me y cubed. That was the two, first two brackets multiplied out. 2x times x gives me 2x squared. 2x times y gives me 2xy. Okay? So what is inside the bracket? x cubed, there is no other x cubed terms, so I'm going to keep that one. Uh, minus xy squared There's no more minus xy squared. Uh, I've got x squared plus 2x squared, that gives me 3x squared. Oops, squared not cubed. Oh. Hold on, I've done something wrong. 
That doesn't look like. This three, uh, it's the square. So I can't, it's the square, so I can't just bring the three in. No, no, I mean inside. The into this one. Inside the square. Because you can't factor out the three. Could you? Because it's not part of the second half of that equation. The 2x, xy to the power of three. You can't factor three out of that. Um, Let me just start over again, because I think I messed myself off somewhere. Doesn't look right. OK, so what I'm factoring out is the x plus y squared. So what I left here, oh, OK, that's what you're saying, yes. 3x plus y times x squared minus y squared plus 2x times x plus y. Okay. Why, why do you need the first x plus y in the brackets? Uh, this one? Yeah. Because you're taking it out. You're taking x plus y squared out of the brackets. Yes. So, why, so when you've got 3x plus y, mm -hmm. the x plus y cube, you need to multiply it out. So do you need that inside the square brackets? This one here? Yeah. I don't. Okay, so this, yeah, I don't need that one. Right. Okay, that looks friendlier. Okay, so 3 times x squared is 3x squared minus 3y squared plus 2x squared plus 2xy. Right. So x plus y squared. I've got 3x squared, 2x squared, that is 5x squared, minus 3y squared plus 2xy. Right. Much simpler. Okay, now, if I was to differentiate this, I would just need to use the product rule once, instead of twice when I was in here. And the chain rule only stays once. So, I'm going to need some space. I'm going to put it up on top in here. So, zxx is equal to then. I need to look at this and differentiate it with respect to x again. So, x plus y squared, the derivative of that is 2x plus y times 1 because the inside derivative with respect to x would be 1. But I'm going to leave that and multiply it with the square bracket, which is 5x squared minus 3y squared plus 2xy plus. Now, I leave the first term. And I need to multiply it with the derivative of the square bracket with respect to x. 5x squared derivative with respect to x is 10x. Minus 3y squared derivative with respect to x is 0. And the 2xy derivative with respect to x is 2y. <coughs> Remember, your y is a constant multiplier that has to be stay, uh, stay in. OK? Using the power, uh, the product rule once is simpler than using it twice, I would say. So there are some cases when going into the algebraic manipulation could make things a little bit easier. So I need to find zyy. So again, go through uh, the same uh, factoring process. OK, so I brought the square out. So what's left is the 3 and the bracket. And if I bring the square out, what's left is the 2y and the x plus y once more. So x plus y squared, 3x squared minus 3y squared minus 2xy minus 2y squared. Uh, 
3x squared is on its own. Minus 3y squared minus 2y squared gives me minus 5y squared and minus 2xy. So that looks slightly different. Um, again, I'm going to have to write up here. So the second order partial with respect to y, then we'll be again use the product rule once. x plus y squared's derivative with respect to y is 2x plus y times 1 multiplied by the square bracket. Oops, not plus minus. Plus, leave now the first term and multiply it with the derivative of the square bracket respect to, a, uh, respect to y. So 3x squared's derivative with respect to y is 0. Minus 5y squared's derivative with respect to, 5, uh, respect to y is minus 10y. And the minus 2xy's derivative with respect to y is the minus 2x. Okay, and I think we can leave it there. And I hope I haven't messed it up again. It can get, it's, it's quite easy to mess these things up. Okay, any questions? Okay, look at some functions that are a little bit more exciting, as to say. Okay. <coughs> now, to make life a little bit easier, before we go into the differentiation, I'm going to slightly uh, rearrange this function, just slightly, because what I can see is that in the fraction, x and y are separated. One is only in the numerator, the other one is only in the denominator. So for that, I don't need to use the um, quotient rule. So to be able to differentiate y, which is going to come in here, I need to bring it up. So I can rewrite this as x times y to the minus 2. And again, ln xy. I can use the chain rule there, but it's going to cancel down to the same thing anyway. So I might as well just use the log rules. And if I have got ln x times y, then that's the same as ln x plus ln y. Oops. ln y. And in that case, the function is a slightly friendlier version of the original, which with the differentiation will be slightly easier. So, the derivative with respect to x, well, x's derivative is 1, so it's just y to the minus 2, so I can actually rewrite this as y to the 2, 1 over y to the 2. ln x, there is no y in here, although this doesn't look like a constant, it is a constant, because what I need to remember that it's now like ln 3. And if you put into your calculator, ln3 is actually a numerical value. So that goes, and the ln y's derivative is 1 over y. Okay? What is the derivative? Oh, what am I talking about? I'm differentiating with respect to x. That's 1 over x. And the ln y is the derivative that's uh, disappearing. 
okay? Now this one is 1 over y squared plus x to the minus 1, okay? I needed to do that because I need to differentiate with respect to x again. Okay, so just recap, x times y to the minus 2, this term's derivative with respect to x is 1 times y to the minus 2, and y to the minus 2 is 1 over y squared. ln x's derivative with respect to x is 1 over x, and ln y is a number like ln 3, and that's derivative is 0. So, I need to differentiate this with respect to x again. 1 over y squared is a constant, so that's derivative will be 0, and x to the minus 1's derivative is minus x times x to the minus, uh, minus x to the minus 2. Okay? Yes? Um, can we also write it as y squared plus x? Must it always be 1 over y squared plus 1 over x? Uh, what do you mean? When you're taking the derivative, the first derivative, yeah. so we have it as 1, you said we could write it as 1 over y, y squared plus 1 over x. Yeah. So we're asking, can we also say y squared plus x? No, 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 that would be totally different because y squared plus x is not equal 1 over y squared plus 1 over x. Those are two totally different functions. These are, these are hyperbolas. This is a parabola and that's a kind of uh, a linear, so it would be very, very different. So be careful because once you have got, I mean, it's just like you're trying to say, okay, a half is the same as 2. That's obviously not the case. So that's the same in here with the functions as well. As soon as something is done at the bottom, you can't just simply bring it up. If you want to bring it up, uh, I could say that 1 over y squared is equal y to the minus 2, and 1 over x is x to the minus 1. If you want to have the x's and y's and just the powers, then you can rewrite this as y to the minus 2 plus x to the minus 1, that gives you exactly the same form. It really depends on, I mean, in my mathemat mathematical training, I've been always encouraged to write them this way, because in that way I can re relate them to the function, what it looks like, easier than if it was negative power or so what, whatsoever. But when it comes to differentiation, the negative power is the only one that you can differentiate. So, you can either leave it like this, or you can rewrite it as minus 1 over x squared. Again, depends on what you need to do with it uh, in the next case. Do you have to use it as a uh, calculation, or whatever. <coughs> okay, so that was zx and zxx. So let's now do zy, okay? So again, this is the function that I'm differentiating. So what is the first term's derivative with respect to y? Well, the x now is a constant multiplier, so I need to keep that in. And y to the minus 2's derivative is minus 2 times x times y to the minus 3. ln x. There's no y in this one, so this derivative will be 0. And ln y's derivative is 1 over y. And because I need to differentiate this again, I'm going to, oops, have to rewrite this as plus y to the minus 1 because that's how I can differentiate it. So z, y, y. This term's derivative with respect to y. I need to bring the minus 3 down, so that's going to give me positive 6. x and y's, function, uh, y's power becomes minus 4 now. Actually, not plus. y to the minus 1, I bring down the negative 1, and then it y to the minus 2. 
So again, if I wanted to rewrite this, I could say it's 6x over y to the 4 minus 1 over y squared. Really depends on if you need to go into more details and work something out, or you just need to find a second order derivative. Okay? So whenever you can, make use of the log rules because they will make your differentiation simpler. Okay, slightly different notation. What do I mean here by y11? The second order derivative of y with respect to the first variable, which in this case will be x1. So again, I need to find the first order derivative with respect to the first variable, which is x1. So what is the first order derivative with respect to x1? Is the first term will become minus 6x1. The second term will be plus 2x2. The third term doesn't have x1 in it, so that's 0. And so is the last term, because that doesn't have x1 into it either. Slightly simple. Certainly simpler than uh, an example two slides before. So I'm differentiating with respect to x1 again. That will be minus 6 plus 0, because there is no x1 in here. So if to find y22, two, two, I need to find the first of the derivative with respect to the second variable first. So minus 3x1 squared doesn't have any x2 in it, so that derivative is 0. Plus 2x1x2's derivative will be the 2x1. Remember that x1 is the constant multiplier now, so I have to keep it. And x2's derivative <coughs> with respect to x2 is 1. Minus 5x2's derivative is minus 5. And minus x, uh, x2 cubed derivative will be minus 3x2 squared. y22. This term is constant, derivative 0. That term, constant, derivative 0. This term is minus 6x2. Okay? If I compare the two second order partials, what can I say about them? What's the difference? The second order partial here is what is it? What is It's a constant. But this one still depends on the x2. So it doesn't matter at what point I'm looking at the second order derivative for this function uh, with respect to x1 it's always a constant change. By this one, the change will depend on which point I'm looking at, at which x2 point I'm looking at that function. Okay? Ah, oh, thanks goodness. Something different. <laughs> okay. Back to the, the, so the, the y1 is, is saying that it's... Okay, if you look at y, yeah. Let's just go back to one slide. If you look at y, what can you see on y? That it has got x1, x1, x2, x2, x2. So it's got two variables, but now I'm naming them x1 and x2. Right. So this is my first variable, x1, okay. and this is my second variable, x2. So the y11 one one tells me is differentiate y with respect to x1, right. and then differentiate again with respect to x1. As opposed to here, differentiate with respect to x2 first, and then with respect to x2 again. So the y22 two two is, is in respect to of x2, and yep. then again with yep. respect to x2. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay. Why would you want to do that, then? Uh, quantity 1, quantity 2, price 1, price 2. Okay, cross partials. 
Now, what's the difference between the cross partials and the second order partials? Okay. The cross partials are also a second order derivative. But what are we doing in the middle of the differentiation? We switch the variables. Okay? So they still second order variables, uh, second order partials. So sometimes you can see them written like this. Okay? That's kind of more of an uh, indication that it's a second order derivative. Uh, but what's important here is that first time I'm differentiating with respect to x, but then I switch the uh, role of the variables and I'm differentiating with respect to y. Now, what do I know about the cross partials? What do I know about fxy and fyx? They are equal. Okay? Because of Young's theorem. But unfortunately, Young had quite a few other theorems as well, so... Uh, if you just search for Young's theorem, you might need to sift through a couple of physics uh, theories there as well. Okay, so to find f x y, first I need to find f sub x because I need to find the derivative, first of the derivative with respect to x. Okay, what rule do I need to use in here? The chain rule. So I'm going to have three x squared plus 4y squared multiply that with the derivative of the inside function with respect to x. So x squared's derivative with respect to x is 2x and 4y's derivative with respect to x is 0. So that gives me 6x times x squared plus 4y squared. What I need to do now, I need to differentiate the result of this with respect to y. Okay, now x is now my constant and y is now my variable. So I switch the order, I switch the rule. What does that tell me now? What rule do I need to use here? No. And that's a very, very common mistake. Why don't I have to use the product rule here? My 6x is now constant, it's like 17, sorry not 17, something like 18. Okay? And as soon as you've got a constant multiplier out in front of a bracket, that's not a product rule anymore. So be careful, be careful uh, because in these cases, depending on if x is treated as a variable or, or as a constant, I might need to use the product rule, might not. In this specific case, I don't need to use the product rule. If it was fxx, I would need to use the product rule because the next would be a variable again. But because now y is the variable, x is my constant, so that can stay. So constant multiplier stays. x squared plus, y, plus 4y to the squares derivative is 2 times x squared plus 4y to the power of 1. And I need to multiply that with the derivative of the inside with respect to y. x squared's derivative is 0 with respect to y. And 4y's derivative is 4 with respect to y. So you have to kind of train yourself to be able to switch between the two in, in midway. So what numbers do I have here? 6 times 2, 12 times 4 is 48 x squared plus 4y oh, I lost an x ok now let's do <coughs> fyx and just make sure that we actually end up with the same result so fy Again, I need to use the product rule, sorry, oh, the uh, chain rule. 
So 3 times x squared plus 4y squared. But now I need to multiply this with the derivative of the inside respect to y. So x squared's derivative with respect to y is 0. And 4y's derivative with respect to y is 4. So this one's slightly slimmer. 12 x squared plus 4y squared. Okay, and if I do f y x, now y is a constant and x is a variable. Okay, so y is constant, x is variable. Constant times something to the power, that means I need to use the chain rule. So 12 times 2 is 24, x squared plus 4y, multiplied with the derivative of the inside with respect to x. x squared's derivative with respect to x is 2x, and 4y's derivative with respect to x is 0. So tidy it up. 24 times 2 gives me nicely back the 48x, x squared plus 4 why? And I'm happy because I did end up with the same result. Okay? It takes some time to get used to switching between the variables, but it's very important for the cross partials, which is again used where? Optimization. Okay? Yes? So. Um, but gra graphic is not easy to, uh, to see it as such because once you do the second order derivative, there is not something you can relate back easily to the first order, uh, to, the, to the original function because now you're looking at the change in the first order. Uh, so you're looking at how the change changes. It's like in physics, first you talk about velocity, then you talk about acceleration. And the acceleration is change in speed. So that's what the second order derivative is, the change of the change. Uh, but here in the cross partial, you're sort of looking at, okay, uh, in the first order derivative, I looked at how a function changes across one of the axes, and then I look at how that one function changes across the other axes. So kind of trying to almost compare them a little bit. Yeah? Um, There you go. It's always nice to have other people in the room that you can talk to and have a bit more experience with economics than I do. <laughs> okay, let's look at this one. I have space in here. Okay, again, what I see is seemingly a quotient rule, but again, in the numerator there is only x and in the denominator there is only y. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rewrite this as 3x times y to the minus 2. And then do the derivatives. So zx is equal to, so I need to differentiate this with respect to x. But that is just 3 times y to the minus 2. Because again, y is now constant, so that is just a constant multiplier. Okay, now I need to differentiate this one with respect to y. So x now constant, and y is now the variable. Now, that's actually quite handy because there's only y left in here. So I need to differentiate this with respect to y. That will be a really, really simple differentiation. Minus 6y to the minus 3. Okay, let's look at the other cross partial. So zy, 
I need to differentiate this with respect to y now. So the 3x is a constant multiplier. I keep that. I need to bring down the power of y and lower the power by 1. So all together that is minus 6x y to the minus 3. Oops. Y x. So with respect to x now, because x is now the variable and y is now the constant, minus 6 is obviously a constant multiplier, so I'm going to keep that one. x is derivative with respect to x is 1, and the y to the minus 3 is another constant multiplier. So I need to keep that y to the minus 3 as well. And nice and handy, they again give me exactly the same. Sometimes they don't look like they're going to give you the same function, but they always do. Any more questions? Or any questions? Okay, we're doing quite good progress, so we might not need to stay here for longer. So, total differential, okay? When we talk about the total differential, we have got this notation. df equals partial f partial x dx plus partial f partial y dy, or if you wanted to use this, the more condensed notation, then you can just say that df equals fx dx plus fy dy. But what does it mean? Okay? Um, again, back to that site. It's, um, it's going to stop in a minute, and then we probably will be able to see a little bit more what's going on. So, this is a function, a z function, which is a variable of x and y and if you look at here that's your total dz and if you look closely that is more or less the sum of this little change and the sum of that little change so basically uh, it's almost like uh, your overall little change uh, in the function how does that add up as a change of the two directional changes so if we go back to the actual definition, this is basically just copy and paste from the notes, the written notes. When we were talking about first order derivatives, we can describe the dy as f prime x dx, where dy is the differential of y, a small change in y, and dx is the differential of x, a small change in x, and, it, and when we talk about small change in x, we talk about immensely small change in x, and the f prime of x is the rate of change of y with respect to x. So this is now the rate of change. So I can describe the change in y as the multiple of the rate of change in x times the change in y. But these changes are really, really small that we're talking about in here. And we just extend this to two or more dimensions. So you adding up two or more small changes multiplied by the rates to get the overall uh, small change. Now, um, I hope this one's also a little bit helpful. Because we were talking about uh, when we introduced uh, 
the notion of the derivative, we were talking about uh, the change as a small change as delta x. So what is actually the difference between delta x and dx is basically that little thing. Okay, when we're talking about delta x and delta y, we were talking about the chord. But now we're actually talking about the change on the tangent rather than the change on two of the fu uh, points of the function. Okay, so remember when we first introduced the derivative, we were talking about, okay, what is the change in here? If I just pick two points on the function, I can calculate the change along that line, which is a good approximation of the curve, but it's not exactly the curve. So that would be the delta x over delta y. But when we actually take that limit to zero, so the change actually, uh, delta x tends to zero, so I'll come back to the original point. Now I get to the tangent. And the dx and the dy are now the changes on that tangent rather than on the curve. So that's almost uh, dim diminishing, a very, very small change difference in here. But that is the conceptual difference between the two things. Uh, in practical situation, that's probably a non-existent small change. Uh, so you can always approximate the change with that formula quite easily. And if you do finance, you're probably going to end up talking about difference equations, so some, somewhere along the line. And those are those ones, and these are the differential equations once you start to talk about those sort of changes. Okay. Now, as long as the calculation goes, these total differentials are relatively simple. Because all you need to do is remember this formula. That df is equals fx times dx plus fy dy. Where fx is the first order partial and so is fy. So if you know those two, you just plug them back into that and you found the di differential. And that's it. <coughs> okay? So let's look at a couple of examples. Um, so what is the first order derivative with respect to x of this function? Well, the first term's derivative will be 15x squared. The second term, 7xy, that's derivative with respect to x is 7y. And the third term only has y in there, so that's derivative with respect to x is 0. Fy, again, look at the same function, but now differentiated with respect to y. So 5x cubed derivative with respect to y is 0. 7xy's derivative with respect to y is 7x. And minus 3y to the 5 derivative is minus 15y to the 4. So, df just will be that. So again, I just pick up the partial, multiply that by dx, and again, pick up the other partial and multiply that by dy. So it's a polynomial function. They change all over the place. So as you can see, although I'm talking about a little change in x, the um, rate of change of that still depends on y and vice versa. Um, can I just ask one more notation? The, the df and you know, the dx, mm -hmm. they're, not, they're straight rather than the curly one. Yes, 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 because it's not total. So you're talking about the total change. Yes? Um, if you've got time, could you please draw that on, a, um, on like a diagram of the triangle? This one? Or would that be, that be too hard, remember? <coughs> uh. Uh, yes, I mean, um, 
go back to that demonstration, uh, the first one on, this, uh, on the previous slide. But basically, what's kind of happening in here is that you would have something like df like this. You would have something like fx dx. And uh, the rest of it is more or less the fy dy. Because together, they sort of have to come up into the same direction. So that's, that's more or less what you can sort of, sort of visualize it. I mean, yes, because just yeah. just think about it. The sum of the two have to be equal to the f. So, 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 yeah. yeah. How, how does that? How does he this? I just can't understand. How it looks at all. Like, how does it look in the same direction? What do you mean? Let's come back to here. Maybe here because it's already stopped. Now, if you can see, the actual definition is like a rather complicated one. It brings in some sort of new things and something tends to zero and the rest of it. Uh, but this is what's actually happening in here. So this one, that's the, that, that's the DZ or df yeah. in our case. Yeah. And that is the sum of this and the sum of that. Yeah. So yeah. I get that. <laughs> okay. I mean uh, why? It's probably a little bit complicated and it's it's good to understand and play around with it, but if it's the only thing that you can't really get your head around, then just learn the rule and go with it. Because uh, some of these concepts in mathematics are, are rather difficult to wrap your head around. Yes? Uh, I don't know if anyone else is doing the, uh, the micro course, but this reminds me of that question mm. um, in the test where you've got like, um, an inferior, where well, you've got a superior good, and you're talking about the when the price of you've got like a utility curve, and you've got two goods, and one of them is a superior good, and the price of it changes, and that you're asking like how the consumption of the other good changes, mm -hmm. and it depends on a number of factors. So you could probably um, express that question in terms of what you're talking about here. Uh, I can't because I'm not an economist. Do you know Anybody? Do you know so you know that first, uh, the first question where they talk about how they had the superior good, um, and they're talking about the superior good was like X around. Um, they don't talk about it after the, after the class, but it reminds me of one of the questions in, um, in the micro test. Um, yeah, if you wanted to like quantify it, you could probably do it this way. I mean, um, funny enough, you mention it. Uh, there are examples in here. So, so we have got a utility function. Such as this one. Then what would be du? Which is a small change in the overall utility. As uh, the sum of the changes in the quantities. So first of all you would need to find u1 dx1 plus u2 dx2 that is the modified formula for the specific case so for that I need to find the first of the derivative with respect to x1 now x1 is to the power of 2 third so I need to bring down the 2 third and what will be x1's power? minus 1 third and x2 to the one third stays because that's a constant multiplier. Now u2, which is the derivative of the utility function with respect to x2, then the x1 to the two third is a constant multiplier that stays. The x2 is to the power of our third, so I need to bring down the third. And now the power of x2 will be minus 2 thirds, 
because one third take away one gives me the negative two third. So the overall small change in the utility is going to be like two third x one to the minus three x2 to the one-third dx1 plus one-third x1 to the third two-third x2 to the minus two-third dx2. So again, the rate of change for x1 is this and the rate of change for x2 is this and they both depend on each other. So the two goods, uh, the change in that uh, influences one another. <coughs> now the second example is a in in a kind of format that we probably want to break up because. Um, I don't really want to use the chain rule here. So I can rewrite this as x to the two third times L to the two third. And again, if I wanted to find the overall change, that will be just QK times DK plus QL times DL. And for that, I just need to find QK which is the derivative of q with respect to k. Now, bring the power down, 2 third k to the minus 1 third, and keep l as a constant multiplier. And if you want ql, do the same thing but reverse the rules. Now, k to the 2 third is a constant multiplier. l to the 2 thirds, that's derivative, is 2 third l to the minus 1 third. And I just pick these two up and put it back into the formula. Um, two third k to the minus one third l to the two third times dk plus two third k to the two third times l to the minus one third dl. And again, the change in capital and the change in labor, again, the rate of change of capital depends on labor as well, and the rate of change of labor depends on capital as well for this specific uh, product function. When it comes to algebraic uh, solution to these, um, they're almost automatic. As long as you know that the total change is rate of change times one of the um, changes plus rate of change times the other uh, change. Um, you just plug in all these things. Of that U1 will be rate of change, yeah? Yes, the U1 is the rate of change of the, 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 change. the change in the X. So change in x1 multiplied by the rate of change of x1 and change in x2 multiplied by the rate of change of x2. And the rate of change is how fast something changes. Okay? Yep. Yeah. Have I? Yes, I have. Okay. Okay. So again, I want uh, DF here, which will be FX DX plus FY DY. Now, to be able to differentiate these two, I want to get rid of the, the root because there is no um, rule for the root. So how can I rewrite the root as a power? That is always a fractional power. And because it's the second root, it will be the half power. 
but this is also raised to the third so altogether x is raised to the 3 2 power and y is raised to simply the half power because there is no other powers in here so fx so the derivative of this function with respect to x bring the power down x to the minus not minus x to the half and y is just the uh, constant multiplier so that stays yeah Okay, that is a bit confusing. It could be easily either way. It might be the third root. Okay, a vote. What what people think? Is it cube root or x to the third? <laughs> okay, we can do both. Okay, right. Let's let's do it this way first. Okay, and then f y. If we go this way, uh, that is a half times x to the 3 over 2, y to the minus half. So if, if that was the correct reading, then df will be 3 over 2 x to the half, y to the half dx plus a half x to the 3 halves y to the minus half dy. Now, if the, call, if the function was actually square root of x times cube root of y, then that would be x to the half and y to the one third. So how would that change? Then fx would be a half times x to the minus half y to the third and then fy would be a third times x to the half times y to the minus two third. So then the total differential is, where am I, a half x to the minus half y to the one third dx plus a third x to the half y to the minus two-third dy. So depending on which reading is correct, if it's x to the third or cube root, these would be the two solutions. Okay, uh, PowerPoint unfortunately is a bit clumsy with mathematical notation. Um, and I can't remember now which example I've chosen because it's I've chosen it <coughs> two years ago. Okay, so um, in the exam, you're probably not going to see it in the root format just because of this ambiguity. They're probably going to put it straight into the fractional power format because that would not be confusing if it's root <coughs> or power. Okay, right now. Why we need to know about the, the um, total differential, in a sense, is that you can apply that into the implicit differentiation. Now, when we talk about implicit functions, what are they? And what is the other uh, type of function? What is the so-called so op almost opposite of the implicit function? Explicit, okay? So what's the difference between explicit and implicit then? <laughs> yes, you can think about it that way. Okay, uh, another very not mathematical way of thinking about it is that in the explicit function, you can express as you said, let's say y is a function of x, but in the implicit version, they all jumbled up. And it doesn't matter how much algebraic manipulations you do, it's not going to be simple enough 
to express y as a function of x. So they all combine and jumble together. Now one important thing is here though, that when you give your function in the implicit uh, way, that's always equal to zero. Otherwise you can't use the implicit rule. And then basically, uh, because you're giving it as an equation most, almost, then the overall change, which is the, would be the df in this side, that would be zero. So in this way you can rearrange the equation and then the rate of change, the dy dx, can be expressed as minus fx over fy, where fx and xy are the uh, partial derivatives. So there are two ways to go about it. One is remembering that this is always equal to zero and rearrange it to find dy dx. Or you can just learn that dy dx is always going to be this format. Doesn't matter what functions you use. Okay? Now, if you want to have uh, a little bit more on implicit differentiation, uh, there is a longish video on Math Tutor which goes into more details in implicit differentiation. Uh, I'm not sure, they might be using functions of signs, trigonometric functions. I can't remember now if this specific video does or not. Um, you don't need to know about the trigonometric functions, but the method is pretty much the same. It doesn't matter what function uh, they use. Um, for implicit differentiation, if you learn this rule, you will be always able to do these calculations. Uh, the way I always remember is that they switch. And because they switch, there is a negative in, in front. Um, so, here's a function. I can't really express y in terms of x because it's not just simply one power that I can factor out whatsoever. So I need to use the implicit uh, differentiation rule. So dy dx is minus fx over fy. So find the two partials and put them back into the formula. So what is the partial derivative of this function with respect to x? minus 2y squared because the first term only have got y to the 5 there's no x in there so that's derivative is uh, 0 and the minus 2xy squared x derivative is 1 and I keep the other as a constant multipliers with respect to y now that's 5y to the 4 minus 4xy okay x is a constant multiplier stays and y squared's derivative is 2y multiply that with 2 gives me the 4xy so this is equals minus minus 2y squared over 5y to the 4 minus 4xy now the negative cancel each other out and one more thing that I might spot here and go into a little bit of algebra is that the y can be factored out from both at the uh, uh, denominator. And therefore I can cancel them by 1y and it's 2y over 5y cubed minus 4x. A tiny little bit simpler might be easier to see what's going on, might not. Personal taste. So the, 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 the minus there, it, that's because it's minus. Yes, it's, it's minus. Right. So it's always, the formula itself have got a negative in there. Okay. Uh, and because this one has become a negative, because it was the second term, which is take away, okay. yeah. uh, those two negatives cancel okay. into positive. Okay. Hold on. Is the minus going to be applied to the... The minus is in the numerator. 
the minus is actually outside in front of the fraction. It doesn't matter. You can put it into the numerator, you can put it into the denominator. Oh. Because uh, basically, minus 2 third is the same as minus 2 over 3 or 2 over minus 3. Oh, okay. it's, it's, it's both. So again, depends on where you want to use it. And because in this case, we've got a new, uh, negative at the top, so I can just cancel those to positive. Okay. Well, the slope of the interference curves is dy over dx. And when you need to find the slope of the interference curve, you can use the implicit rule of differentiation, but that assumes that dy equals zero, because otherwise you can't use the implicit rule. Question is, which I've always wondered myself, why is dy equal to zero? Yeah? Well, it's equal to zero by definition, because otherwise it wouldn't be an indifference curve. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I, such simple things that, that don't really explicitly explain, because everybody assumes that by just looking at the definition you would make this connection, um, always baffles me. So basically, indifference curves by definition, constant level of u, therefore <laughs> du is zero, because constant does not change. Okay, I just, sorry, it might have been absolutely uh, sort of um, obvious to you, but it wasn't for me, so I thought I'd draw attention to that. Okay, because the implicit differentiation rule is almost solely applied for indifference curves when you're trying to find the slope of it. So, find the slope of this indifference curve. So, dy dx is equals minus fx, oopsie, let's stick to the function in question, so ux over uy. So I need the indifference, uh, sorry, I need the utility function's derivative with respect to x, so what will that be? Well, luckily, the two uh, variables are separated, so it's quite simple to do the differentiation here. So I would get 2 third x to the minus 1 third, and y's derivative with respect to x is 0. And uy, same, the first term only depends on x, so that's derivative with respect to y will be 0. And the second term's derivative with respect to y is 2 third y to the minus 1 third. So I pick these two and put that into the formula. Minus 2 third x to the minus 1 third over 2 third y to the minus 1 third. The 2 third cancels out. Minus. Now. If I wanted to remove the negative powers and change them to positives, what would that actually be? You just switch them over because the top for a negative power means bring it down. So that would be x to the third and the bottom in a negative power means bring it up. And in this case the negative doesn't disappear because neither of these are a negative. Okay, and I think, yes, that was the last one. I'm very proud of myself being able to keep it short enough for today, because I think two hours of mathematics is enough for everybody in any one day. <laughs> okay, now, uh, we booked the room for another hour, so I'm more than happy to stay back and ask any mathematical question. I mean, answer any mathematical questions if you have any. Uh, if not, then uh, thank you. And uh, the next workshop is in two weeks' time, and that is on exponentials, logarithms, logarithmic differentiation, and homogeneity.
okay if you can't make it uh, hopefully the video will work and you'll be able to watch the tutorial online uh, by the way anybody knows where to find these recorded videos where Moodle so if you go into Moodle you go to Tony's QT uh, one of the headings is mat uh, mathematics support resources and amongst those there is something like uh, workshop resources and recording something I've just changed it now so it's a little bit more explicit where they are and in that sub page you will find the slides and the recordings which probably will be useful when you start to prepare for the exam but not so important for air, especially if you came to the workshops okay right let me stop the video